This episode of Brains on Games is about a card game set on a coral reef. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and like I said earlier, this episode is about a card game that's set on a coral reef. A few weeks ago, I had a chance to play a game online with some of the folks from Half Monster Games in Australia, and when we started talking about the things that we were up to, well, they were kind enough to send me this game, a game called Virtual Reef Diver. This is a game that can be played with between two and eight players, plays in about half an hour, and it can be played by kids and adults too of all ages. I've laid out the cards here, and you can see that there are pictures on them of different kinds of plants and animals that you'd find on a coral reef. And that's what the game is about. It's about learning about this ecosystem and really too the impact that people are having on that ecosystem. What do you do in this game? Well, the key is the players are trying to guess what kind of creature is depicted on each of these cards. You've got a little cheat sheet here that gives you the different categories that you might be looking for. Hard or soft coral or algae or fish or marine mammals or invertebrates. There's all different kinds of plants and animals here that you're going to be guessing. On your turn, you'll choose one of these cards. You'll try and guess what type of creature or plant it might be. You might look at this thing and recognize it as a shrimp, and a shrimp would be an invertebrate. Then you can pick up the card and take a peek at the back. Now, you wouldn't show the opposing team just in case you guess wrong. If you get it right, then you get to show everyone. In this case, you get a couple of points for the invertebrate card. Now, if you're playing with more advanced students or kids who already know something about this ecosystem, you could get bonus points for guessing the particular habitat that that creature lives in or the common name uh, of that creature or the category that it falls in the scientific taxonomy is another way that you can get some extra points and those are all listed on the side of the card. In addition, there's some kind of a fact about the creature on the card, which is sort of like uh, way back we talked about Wingspan, which is a, a game about birds, and there were facts about the birds on each of those cards. Well, in this case, you get facts about the plant or the fish or the mammal that you're talking about. Uh, this is an interesting card, actually, because some of the cards in this deck have a symbiotic relationship with another creature on the reef, and that is the case for this shrimp. The banded coral shrimp, if you want to know the common name, <laughs> if you couldn't read that from the card here. Uh, and so if I had guessed this one correctly and I get to keep that one for the points and later on I'm able to find a parrot fish, that pair together is protective against disturbances that are going to happen to the reef during the game. So play continues until all of these cards have been taken off the reef. And obviously then, this is a game that's about factual knowledge, specifically knowledge about the coral reef ecosystem, and that requires some good long-term factual memory. As you go through the cards and you start to recognize the creatures, hopefully kids who are playing this game will get a better idea of which is which, uh, and that will improve their scores when they play later games. If you look closely, if you've got really good eyesight, you might be able to see a couple of things about this grid that I've laid out. One is that there's a clownfish here, and most of us learned about clownfish from watching Finding Nemo. But also, here you've got a card that doesn't really belong. There's one thing on here that is not a plant or an animal that you would find on the coral, coral reef, and that is this research ship. So one of the types of cards that you might be choosing is technology. There's a satellite in there. There's a few different things. These are all things that scientists or researchers are going to use to learn more about what's happening with the coral reef. So you've got this research ship here. You've got a bit of information about it on the back. And there, in fact, there's a code here, a QR code, that you can use your phone to find out even more information. For the research ship, the website even has a virtual tour so kids can take a look and see what these ships are really like when you're on board. You don't get points like you do for the plants and animals in the game if you choose technology. Instead, you get to draw an action card. 
and the action cards have some bit of information about scientific research about the reef and some benefit that might be helpful to you later on. In this case, what happens if you track marine populations? Why might you do that? Well, it does help conservationists to know what's happening on the reef. In the game, again, you get some protection from the disturbance that happens to the reef in between rounds. We'll talk about that in a sec. But in this case, you can play to stop a reef disturbance from eliminating your marine mammals or your fish from the points that you're going to have at the end of the game. Once you've cleared the grid of all of these cards, that's what happens before the beginning of the next round. You draw one of these reef disturbance cards and there are things like, well, in this case, it's an oil spill. Again, you've got the factual information about what's this all about in the real world. And the in-game impact of this reef disturbance is that players are going to have to give up one of each type of creature that they've gathered along the way. Unless they have something that protects them. That marine population's action card would allow them to protect their marine mammals or the fish that they've collected. Once you've resolved that reef disturbance, you lay out the cards again for the next round and you repeat that until you've played three rounds. The team with the most points will be the winner of the game, but everybody's going to be learning something about the plants and animals that live on and around those coral reefs. And that's Virtual Reef Diver in a nutshell. A quick game that's all about improving your knowledge of the coral reef ecosystem. Thanks again to Half Monster Games for sending that along. If you have any questions or suggestions for me, you can find me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will be posted and the previous episodes are up there already. Brains on Games is the Twitter handle and the Instagram feed and the Facebook page, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.